Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League and the Champions League. Here are the headlines from week 29 in our Premier League season. Arsenal continue their scintillating form, beating Leeds 4-1. Manchester City try to keep pace in the title race with another dominant win, beating rivals Liverpool 4-1. Newcastle take third place in the Premier League, beating Manchester United 2-0. Chelsea stumble again, losing 2-0 at home against Aston Villa. Brennan Rodgers leaves Leicester City by mutual agreement, the 12th managerial change this season. And a fiery relegation battle continues to heat up. All that and more in today's episode. Okay, Robbie Earl, are you on, my friend? Are you ready to go? Yes, sir. Let's start, my friend, with the team at the top of the uh, Premier League table right now, Arsenal, against relegation strugglers Leeds United. I've got to stay right, right at the start, Rob. Of course, I, did, I was in this weekend. I did this game. The team that Leeds mm. United put out, my friend, of course, we'll get to live uh, Arsenal in a second. Um, but the, the lineup for Leeds, Rob, with all the better yeah. players on the bench... We know that they've got mm. some big, big games against relegation guys on Tuesday and on Sunday. Palace on Sunday mm. and Nottingham Forest on Tuesday. Let's start with that. Are you okay with a Premier League team putting out a side that's basically, nah, we're just going to write this one off? Um, I'm not too against it, I've got to be honest. Mm. I think I've got to put myself in Javi Gracia's shoes. I've got to put myself in the man in charge of keeping Leeds in the league this season. And if I'm going to Arsenal and I'm playing some players who might be 60-70% not great, uh, whether they could have, pick up an injury or sustain the, the injury that they've got, whether they're quite right, whether it's the right game to go into, do I think I'll get a point from that game? With the team that I've set out that hasn't got maybe some of the star names or the bigger names on. Listen, if we can work hard and get a point, I'd be delighted. A small defeat I'd possibly accept, Rob, based on the next two games, a home against Nottingham Forest, home yeah. against Crystal Palace. Yeah. If I can turn the, that into four or six points, it vindicates my decision. That, you know, I start Bamford at Arsenal, he comes off with a knock, he's not right for those games, and we lose anyway. I kind of un I don't particularly like it, but I understand why he's done it. And if I was in the same place, I might do the same thing myself, mate. Yeah, I had a chat with Tim Howard about it, and Tim didn't have a problem with it at all. Like, you know, you got you got to do what you got to do. I mean, I'd point out a couple of things yeah. really. Obviously, the game is yeah. about the fans. The fans travel down to London. You know, you don't want to go there knowing that the the manager's picking a team that's not really going to have a chance. I would also say for a new manager in the in the club, another ninety minutes is another. A game to prepare to work on the team to try and groove the team a little bit yes there's a risk of injury um and you never know what you might get but i, I think there's there's argument on both sides um but they got what they i guess mm. deserve they got a 4-1 um spanking from arsenal football club who continue rob to look to look good um continue mm. to show us depth now we've talked about the center forward position with jesus initially arsenal looking great yeah. getting injured Eddie and Ketter coming in, scoring goals, looking really, really good. Signing Elandro Trossard in the window, has played as a nine, a false nine, played in a little bit of a different position on the right-hand side in this game. Um, they've got good depth, haven't they? And everybody, like, you know, I think I mm. said, like, they can attack in the wide areas. We know about the the, the brilliance of Martinelli and, and Saka. Saka was, was left out on the bench for this one, but also the inside attacking zone as well, if you like, with Odegaard, Granit Xhaka and mm. the centre-forward. So, Jesus, Rob... Play, started as a nine, um, earned think, his penalty. Yeah. Do you think it was a soft penalty? Yeah. Um, I thought it was, I thought it was a penalty. Where you yeah. where you put it in the scale mm. is up to you. Yeah, soft because there wasn't a lot of contact, but it, it's a foul in the box. Ailing doesn't need to do it. No. He even moves his foot up a bit to catch the knee. Mm. I thought it was a bit of brilliant play by yeah. by Jesus, and 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 I want to talk about him a little bit a little bit deeper, yeah. Rob. Um, you know, his first star, he gets two goals. You know, let, let's go back to the World Cup. Let's go back to the injury. Let's go back to uh, many people saying this will be what will you know disturb. Arsenal's uh, run to a title. They've got no other real centre forward. It. You've talked about Nketiah's come in and done, done a good job. He's gone out now. Trossard's been a brilliant, mm. brilliant bit of sneaky business 
Rob, that he, he, he's plugged into that false nine when he need to. He played on the right-hand side this time, still mm. come, coming up with assists. But Gabriel Jesus, Rob, is, is one of those players who... It, it's a really interesting thing, and I, I, and I was watching him closely because he's come back from the injury, and in some respects, if you say, go back for, from November to the restart after the World Cup to, to his first start today... In some respects, and, 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 and I mean this in, in, in... I hope you understand what I'm saying. They haven't really missed him, Rob. They're still top no, of the table by eight, by eight points clear, and they haven't really missed him. Yet, bringing him back gives them something more. Bringing him back gives them... There's something about Gabriel Jesus. When he gets on a dribble in the box, Rob, anything can happen, which happened at the weekend. He gets himself a, 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 a penalty. Yeah. When he starts those little comes deep turns and, and, and gets his dribble in, gets the ball out to Chossel and makes his run in the box, it's just something different. What, however you look at this guy, from now to the end of the season, Arsenal have got... Another option, another dimension to the way they play. Gabriel Jesus brings something that none of the others do. And, you know, my, my sort of thought, Rob, is starting to get to, and I know I think we've talked about this about three, four weeks ago, and Lee Dixon came on, on air and said, you know, it's, it's the wobble, it's the time when the nerves come. I've got to ask you, Rob, when is that time coming? Because my evidence so far, and I know we're 10 games to go and, and whatever, is... I don't see it, mate. I, I don't see signs of it yet. I don't see people not wanting the ball, people afraid to make mistakes, people afraid afraid to express themselves. In some respects, I see the opposite. OK, I, I, I hear that. I'll tell you where, where we see it, as if on the next game on Sunday, Liverpool at Anfield, they lose. I, yeah. I, I'm just looking back at the fixtures, Rob. Of course, this was a, a comfortable mm. victory 4-1 against Leeds United before that Crystal Palace yeah. that hadn't been in a good run. That was 4-1 as well. Fulham away, they, they win. Bournemouth, Everton, Leicester. It's not Seven as though they, they, wins. They, they... Yeah, but mm. they've had a... I mean, of course you've got to win, but it's not as though they've had some of the better teams there in that run. Now, and, you know... Uh, and, and I'm, I, I'm still not buying that know, better team. All, all Bournemouth, Bournemouth have days. Leicester yeah, have days. West Ham have days. All I'm saying is, to answer that question, the, the running now, yeah. and to be fairly Dixon, I think what he said is, right in the last... When you're sort of 10 games and under, when, when you can see that line, mm. and if there is a game, Rob, where they drop yeah. points or they lose or they have a bad performance and they, they lose the game, that's yeah. the... That's the point. Now, we saw that earlier in the season where they had a little wobble. They lost, I think it was around the Man City game yeah. and another, I think they lost a cup game or something else. And, they, and we were questioning, oh, is this it? And they bounced back pretty quickly. If they have a defeat or a yeah. setback or two in these last next couple of weeks, that's when I think Lee Dixon says, wow, that's when you start to realise it. So I hear you. You're absolutely right to this point. There's no sign of it. We said in the last couple of podcasts, Rob, they look like they're playing without a worry mm. in the world. Lovely, lovely football. Yeah. They're improving. Um, that's where mm. you know we'll see at Anfield, Liverpool aside that can you can get anything from them. Um, just going back on the yeah. striker situation, Rob. Now, I mean it's a it's a it's a so many riches for for Mikel Arteta now. Huh. Yeah, Saka sat out. Trattard assisted brilliantly for Jesus' second mm. goal, first goal of the penalty. Jesus, of yeah. course, himself Martinelli. We know this Arsenal side pretty much has been very 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 stable. If he wants a stable team and yeah. a stable front three, he's got a whole week, hasn't he? Now he's got a whole week to Liverpool. He's got a whole week to yeah, West Ham United. Liverpool. He ain't yeah. got many midweeks now for 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 a little while. What is his front three, Rob? What what does he do? Does he with the way that Trussard's playing? And I will tell you right now, right? And 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 and, and you might I don't you know whether you disagree or, or agree. I still yeah. really like Leandro Trussard as the false nine, assisting, scoring, yeah. linking things together. I like him as a central player. You're always going to go for Bakara Saka mm. on the right-hand side. The, the wingers have been the stars. Really, yeah. they've been the, the top goal scorers, Martinelli and Saka. So, mm. to, to over to you, mate. You Jesus, Enketia, probably not Enketia. Or will you stick with Trossard yeah. from the centre? Um, it, think it, of the whole picture, It's going to be, listen, injuries and things will, 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 will take the place. But I've got to say, Rob, if I've got a centre-forward like Gabriel Jesus in form... Causing problems, scoring goals. He starts for me. Does he? And I know of Trossard. Trossard. And that's no slight on Trossard. Mm. I just think it's a centre forward, Rob. For Trossard's all the assists and, and, and the days when he's been brilliant. I mean, he, he'll go down and we'll talk about those best signings in the winter window. Yeah. Trossard's going to be part of that conversation, mate, what yeah. he's done in his football. It was incredible that he, he, he slotted in. But 
If I've got an inform goal scoring Gabriel Jesus, I talked about the options, I talk about the things he does. He's into play with Martinelli and, and, and Saka and his ability to drop deep and leave holes maybe for Odegaard and Jacker. I play him, Rob, if he's mm. fit and he's, he's in form and scoring goals. And if he isn't, I can quite rightly stick him on the bench and no Trossard goes in as a false nine. And it might be against different opposition yeah, where I might mm. want to, you know, against City. Against City, I might play Trossard, by the way. who just gives me a, 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 gives Security City a few more problems. An yeah. extra man in midfield. You know, City know, you know, Gabriel Jesus knows the City players. He's played against them. They probably think they know his strengths and weaknesses. Trossard brings us something different. So, I think all she's for courses, but, um, I mean, you say it's a... It's a it's a, it's a multitude of riches he's, yeah. he's got up front. Yeah. But um, a, a fit and goal-scoring Trossard, um, Gabriel, from now to the end of the season, Rob, yeah. puts Arsenal in a better position to win the league. Well, you talked about Man City, Rob. Let's jump to Man City's game because, of course, it's the first game, um, or yeah. the, the 10 o'clock game, the Arsenal yeah. game, 4-1. Man City, mm. uh, of course, played first, and it was another same scoreline against yeah. Liverpool, 4-1. Um, OK, well, headlines here. I mean, crikey. Where do you want to start, Rob, on this? You, why don't you start on this game wherever you want? On because there's there's stories here on both sides of this game. City four, yeah, um, Liverpool one. Well, 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 let's start with um, the headline that, that came out first as, as the game kicks off. No Haaland, Rob. Yeah. So those who are making the suggestion that Man City are a better team without Haaland might say this was evidence of that that, that the football might be better. You know, make your own, make your own, um, take your own opinion on that one. Um, it was a Man City team um, that were brilliantly set up. Rob, there are days when Man City are really good, and there are days when Man City are almost unplayable. I got, I thought this was getting towards the unplayable. I thought they were outstanding in in, in all aspects of, of, of the game. They've now got John Stones, Robbie Musto, who's moved from a centre-back yeah. who we all said's got a rick in him and just wait for the mistake, to playing at full-back, to now playing in midfield, to dominating a game in midfield as a six with Rodri. We've now got Gundogan and, and, and KDB flying on as two tens. We've got a Liverpool team, Rob, who used to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this Man City team and then and some, and used to add a little bit more intensity in that. City's game and their... Consistency, Rob. Their excellence, their clinical yeah. excellence, Rob, blew them away. And, 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 and Liverpool were hanging on for dear life as the game wore on. Oh, wow. Rob, I've got to stop you there, mate. Blimey. Breaking news here, just in, in my ear, my producer. Chelsea have just fired Graham Potter. No way. Wow. 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 Uh, <laughs> well, Graham that's, that's... Potter and Chelsea were, 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 were on, the, on the next list. Let's finish City. Let's right, finish let's City. Finish yeah, OK. Let's finish City and Liverpool because, you yeah. know, this was a big story of the weekend. And then let, 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 let's move right, it on to, to Chelsea, Aston Villa. Mm. Yeah, OK. So, so just back on City, Rob. Amazing that news, yeah. isn't it? That amazing that news. Anyway, uh, just on the defenders, Rob, and, and <laughs> I think we're looking for or neutrals like us, are looking for, for, for things with City that's going to be difference makers, right? I looked at this back Seems, four yeah. in yeah. this Man City lineup now, and we've seen this for a little while now, Rob. Mm. Ake, Diaz, Akanji, Stones, four centre-backs. Yeah. Four centre-backs four centre yeah. uh, yeah. in their DNA is being defensive. Of course, John Stones got the ability to move into that midfield, so yeah. that works, of course. But I just think yeah. that might be an added... An added feature of this team, and I'm thinking about the Champions League now for City, Rob, that might mean something different. Yeah. It might mean that when they go forward and they attack like they do always against every side, they got better insurance about against counter-attacks. They got defensive players and Ake yeah. and Stones with the two centre-backs that have just maybe give them more protection going forward. We know about Erlen Haaland and what he can bring in terms of those extra goals. We've mm. talked about it on our podcast, but I just wanted to make that point again. It is this back four. It's the, yeah. This is his back four now. Um, yeah. was was pretty amazing. I mean, what they're doing, what they did in this game without Ireland, without Phil Foden, absolutely fantastic. Jack Grealish, Rob, <clears throat> before we move into Liverpool, Jack Grealish had a special game. Well, we, yeah. we featured him a little bit with the way he ran back and stopped yeah. an almost certain goal. Yeah. He creates and scores goals himself now. 
Are we starting to see Jack he, he Grealish He was close to my underappreciated yeah. Bob this week. Yeah. I've got to be yeah. honest. He, he was right up there, but I just think he's probably more appreciated and, and gets the headlines. And, and I saw he did a breakdown and talked about him yesterday. Mm. But, uh, yeah, what, he, he definitely looks and feels like he's a real City player now, an important part of this team, Rob, not just like a little part of the cog. It looks like he's taking a bigger role and wants to accept more responsibility. Anybody else stand out for you for Man City, my friend? Uh, who have I got? Um, Julian Alvarez in the, in the false nine position, my friend, is a very, very different profile to Erling Haaland. Also a scorer, though. Smart. Poacher. He's a poacher Goal as well, Rob, isn't he? Poacher. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, intelligent, lovely interplay with his teammates, knows that false role nine, gives them another dimension, Rob, is, is, is a young player. I think he's re-signed, hasn't he signed a longer-term contract now? So the kind of player looks like yeah. Peps believes in and thinks down the road may have a bigger part to play. Um, I thought he, he was excellent. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna go to my underappreciated player oh, uh, well, of the week, Robbie Musto. Now... Yeah. I think I picked John Stones not too long ago and said basically nobody, man, you know, I bet if you walked around the Etihad and looked for names of players on the back of shirts, you'd see very John, few John Stones one. I'm wondering how many Ilkay Gundogan shirts you'd see if you walked around the Etihad, Rob, before a game. Mm. Because I think he's one of those players who I think... If the opposition, you know, when you get a team sheet and you look, oh, De Bruyne's playing, oh, Foden's playing, oh, Grealish is playing, oh, yeah. Haaland's playing, yeah. I'm not sure many fans would go, oh, Gundogan's playing. But let me tell you, my friend, yeah. in terms of... I did a little bit of reading up on him. He's Pep's first signing in the door from uh, Borussia Dortmund. So, you know, Pep had, played, had, had been in Germany, probably seen him, knew what he was about, signs him. He's one of those players, Rob, where I'm asking... You, people would ask, like... Yeah, but what's he good at? I went back and read a couple of things on, on him in Dortmund. One of the coaches at Dortmund said he's good at everything. Yeah, he's he one is. of the most intelligent midfield players they've, they've worked with. He makes players around him better. He creates space for other people. He reads a game with, with, with great understanding. I remember, Rob, do you remember a few years ago? Well, it's four or five years ago. He came in studio. He'd had an ATL injury, came into the studio for... yeah. Um, a, a couple of segments we talked to him about tactics and, and the way he is at City and, and his ambitions. Um, we've seen him Rob play as a six. We've seen him play as an eight. We've seen ten. him play as a double ten at times with, mm. with De Bruyne. He's got thirteen Premier League goals one season, top goal scorer mm. uh, in twenty twenty one when they played with a false nine. And his game again at the weekend, Rob. He's, he's understanding of the first goal when he, he's looked. Two or three times around the shoulder, sees Grealish in a wide position, plays it, Alvarez scores. Gets himself a goal in, in, in Jack and half. You know, understands his role and his position in the team. I think he was voted captain by the, the, the dressing room, almost like he's the one we want him to wear the armband. Um, just unappreciated by lots of people, probably excluding Pep Guardiola. And it was just one of them days when, you know, Grealish... Is the poster boy yeah. and Haaland's yeah. the superstar and Kevin De Bruyne is the class player. Yeah. Ilkay Gundogan, Rob, my underappreciated player of the week. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. And, and, and this why we do this. He he is such a, a epitome of this this kind of little award that we do each weekend because it's mm. so true. It's so true. And in that season, Rob, where they they were struggling for goals. He stepped up with so many, and he's yeah. got such a good nous of getting into the box and finding, 13, yeah. getting between mm. players and scoring the goals. He's great on the ball. He can he has a tackle as well in, in him. So no, it's a really good shout. Um, Ilkay Gundogan, what a player he is, and what a consistent player he is. Thirty two years of age now, Robbie Ilkay Gundogan. Thirty two, um, and yeah. we've been in this company a little bit. I went over to LA and I um, I did um, we did an interview with Ilkay Gundogan. What a wonderful chap he is as well. Very humble. Uh, and respectful, yeah. so it's a really, really good shout on that one. Um, let's switch it over, Rob. We'll get to Chelsea in a second. We'll do Chelsea's game next after this one, but let's just yeah. we've got to talk a little bit of Liverpool, Rob. And um, you know, after the game, mm. you know, I, I wanted to talk Liverpool in our segment, and I wanted to 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 say what I thought about Liverpool because this I thought, and of course, granted, Man City were excellent on the day. I just think, yeah. you know, well, from what we are, we would expect from Jurgen Klopp and a, a team from him. I thought this was so poor, yeah. so behind, so lacking in fight. Yeah. 
when they got a good chance, a realistic yeah. chance of a top four position. Um, with other things that they're lacking right now in terms of positional play, midfield play, centre backs, full backs, but to lack the fight. I mean, first half there wasn't a ton in it. It was one one, wasn't it? At half time, or it was, it was yeah, tight. It was, I think it was one one. It was one one. You know, it could have been two if Salah had got the ball. Grealish comes back, but we're one one at half time. Half time. Half time. Like, for... Yeah, it's kind of set up. It was nicely poised. Yeah. Both teams mm. looked dangerous when they were going forward. But as soon as that second goal in, then the third went in for City. God, Liverpool yeah. just gave up. Rob just gave up and. I think yeah. to be fair to Klopp, he said afterwards that that's not acceptable, and um, mm. you know, I, I just, I just think that's, you know, we we've given so much praise to this football club and this manager and this team yeah. over, over a period of time. Yeah. You know, to, we're not doing our jobs if we don't point out stuff that that's no. that's really not acceptable. And I know at City, and I know what's going on. At Liverpool has been a difficult season, but I expected mm. way more than that, particularly in the half, second half. It's pretty much a collapse. Do you see anything different to that, Rob? No, and, and, and you're right. I, I was the same. I wrote here, Rob, that it, it's difficult when you've seen this team being put together, uh, what it's done, how it's pushed. Probably hasn't won as much silverware as it should have done for how good they've been, and that's only down to how great M M Man City are. But you have to tell it how it is, Rob, right now for me. I look mm -hmm. at the goalkeeper, and then I look at the top end of the pitch, and I think there's enough of the top end of the pitch to be title-chasing, and the goalkeeper's good enough. The, the stuff in between, Rob, isn't good enough. And the reality is that two full-backs who are not at the same level at the moment, Trent Alexander is as, as, as not defending at all, and it's becoming an issue. Yeah. You've got a Rolls-Royce and Virgil van Dijk who has not come back from his injury in, in, the, in, in the manner that we all probably hoped and Liverpool hoped. He's not the same player right now, Rob. Now, that's not to say he can't, he can't get him, but he had a big injury and he's not the same player. A midfield we all know about, Rob, we talk about. Yeah. How a midfield at, at, at Liverpool who are looking what they're looking can still think James Milner has got a role to play when he's been a brilliant sim, what an absolutely top-class pro. Alex uh, Oxlade-Chamberlain, Naby Keita. I mean, we're talking about the top end of, of where we are. Those players are not, are not good enough, Rob. And if they were at Man City, they'd have been out the door. They get rid of, you know, Fernandinho leaves uh, Manchester City because they're moving on and, and things are getting up. Sergio Aguero leaves Manchester City because things are moving on. Liverpool haven't made the same ruthless um, decisions with some players. And it... it all came out in the second half against the Manchester yep. City team, who used to be on level terms. There was virtually there was a point between those over over so many mm -hmm. seasons, Rob. Mm -hmm. There's 22 points difference between the two teams right now. 22 mm -hmm. points, and however Liverpool are with all those names still on the sheet, it should never be as easy as it was for Manchester City. It should never be as easy as as they played in the second half against Liverpool, and that's what Jurgen Klopp's got to address. Whether it means he's got to come again with another collective, with another group, and, and build the spirit and the character and all that, we'll see whether time he's given time. We'll see whether he's given them money. But right now, Rob, uh, Liverpool, and I said it a few weeks ago, and a few of my Liverpool friends said, "Oh, it's a bit harsh." Are a fading force. Are a fading force at the moment in yeah. Premier League football. And I'm just looking at this, the uh, the rest of the season for them. I mean, they're eight points away from the top four positions. Eight points now. With yeah, like they've got eleven games left. I just, you know, I, I fear. Of course, we know they've got a very difficult next couple of games. Chelsea away and Arsenal at yeah. home on Sunday. Uh, and then Leeds, they play Leeds mm. after that. I just don't know where they go from here, Rob. Is there anything left in the season for them? Is the season over? Well, I suppose European football, Rob, at some level, is, is, yeah. is still, for, for Liverpool, has still got to be, you know, if it's Europa League football, it's Europa League football. It's a tournament they could go and win and guarantee Champions Conference, League. The, the Europa League um, so, yeah, there's always some, you know, home games at Liverpool will sell out. Liverpool away in any grounds are big. It's still a big game. So I'm sure Jurgen Klopp is not going to allow the season just to, to, to um, peter out. But you're right, you know, they've got to show a bit more hunger and, and drive and desire, um, you know, if, if they're going to find themselves in one of those European places. Because like Brentford and, and Brighton and we see Newcastle now, other teams, Robbie, we didn't expect there are still fighting and, and, and firing on all cylinders. Well, we'll see whether on Tuesday um, there's a reaction from this performance, mm. Rob. Tuesday they go away to... Stamford Bridge into Chelsea Football Club. And, of course, we've just got breaking news. Yeah. Obviously, the result of the game was Chelsea wow. nil, Aston Villa 2. Really, wow. really poor from Chelsea. Um, but it still feels yeah. a surprise, Rob, that we've just heard in the last 10 minutes 
Yeah. That they've parted ways and Graham Potter's going to leave the football club. Wow. Well, uh, this was well, meant to be an appointment, well, Rob, well. that's going to be judged uh, mm. in in um, in years, not years, months or not, weeks. It's yeah. going to be a long term. Yeah. He had a long, was it a seven year contract or yeah. something that he signed? Young players, this yeah. is the guy that they wanted. Um, go on then. F- first reaction from you, Rob, on this news before we get into the details of this game. Um, not that surprised is my first reaction, Rob. I, I, I watched yesterday, I watched a game, I was, I was obviously off, so watch a game, you know, you sit with your, your notepad, and, and I'm looking through the group, Rob, and I'm saying, my, my, my first thing I wrote is, the Graham Potter project is not working. It's not working, Rob. No, it and, no. and, and, and a great comparison is to Unai Emery, who's gone in at Aston Villa. And... Yeah. Yes, we know, you know, relationships take time and getting used to players and change of systems. Unai Emery's gone into a football club and made a difference with the team that to the point where Aston Villa had a better understanding how they were going to win Much that game better. than Chelsea Much did. Much better. Much Chel- better. Chelsea got stars. St- Chelsea got, you know, world stars and $100 million signings and uh, wages and ability and quality. They have got no chemistry. Uh, the relationships that should be part of, of, of a team are not there, Rob. So it's like, I was thinking, it's like me and you doing a podcast with somebody different every week. How are we going to build a relationship? How I am know. I going to know what you're going to, what, where I am? That, I mean, the first goal could yeah. be culpable yeah, of, totally. of Kukure and not knowing what Koulibaly is going to do. He has the ball, Ollie Watkins goes and scores. First goal. Yeah. We've got a team that's, Struggling for organisation, and and that comes down to Potter, Rob. He, that's his job. That's what he's supposed to be good at. Yep. Um, all this possession can't turn it into anything. I think it was no. twenty-one slow. shots, Rob. Um, can't it slow? Too many players wanting to do the same things end up in the same parts of the pitch. Want to make the same runs. You've got Rhys James, who's one of your most dynamic forward play. For, can play from the wide position as your left side centre back, Rob. I looked on the bench, you've got Buddy Shield and you've got Chalaber. Yet you've got Rhys James, no, who is your right side centre back of yeah, three, yeah. and, and Loftus Cheek on the, the right yeah. end back. It just doesn't fit, there's no balance. And the, the biggest thing that came out of the game, Rob, when, when I was watching it, I watched his faces and watching body language, is there's no belief in the football, there's no belief anymore. And mm. once I'd gone, I am less surprised. Yeah. After watching the game no. yesterday, than I was if you'd have asked me this question Friday. No, I tell you, mate. I, I, well said, and uh, I, you know, I, I think it, it it was talk about. I just thought it was so many steps back, and there's almost no point in going over the game, Rob, because this news trumps everything. Mm. And I think going going back yeah. to the decision, and I always said this when it, when it started to be a struggle and, and the results weren't great, the whole narrative was, well, you got to give them time. And yes, of course, that's always the yeah. case with somebody new like that. But I always said, said it before. Mm. It's got to be some kind of like progression. You got to see it. Well, see what he's doing there. It didn't work out, but you can see what he's doing. Oh yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't very yeah. good. But there's got to be a steady progression, and there hasn't been. And that's been, I think, it's in September, mm. Rob, that he took over the side. The constant change. Yeah, around, September 22. Yeah. Uh, and he he looked. His expression was a different one on the sideline. Graham Potter at the end mm. of that game in the last in the last 10 or 15 minutes. You looked at his face. God, blimey. It, 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 so, so I know what you mean in terms of surprise. I just, I expected that they would give him to the end of the season. Uh, they got Real Madrid, haven't they, coming up in the in the Champions League. Yeah, maybe Real Madrid they, in a couple of weeks. Maybe they just feel I, like... I looked at the next fixtures, Rob, yeah. So Liverpool at home, away to Wolves. Yeah. Away to Real Madrid, home to Brighton, home to Real Madrid. I thought right there is, is it, 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 it's hit for him, but... Uh, the question I'd written, Rob, that in this is before we'd even we, the news had come out. So I was, I was doing it yesterday. I said, "Why am I worried for, for Potter?" Was if, if if he stumbles through till the summer and and you know won a few games, drew a few, yeah. I don't know, lost a couple, but we got to the summer. How do we go from there? What what are the owners thinking? Like, oh, it'll all be it'll all come good now, or it's all going to change, or I don't know. I I was starting to get to the point where I can't see how it's it's going to improve. That that summer period doesn't give you no, any no, no. hope, no, no but, particular but, hope for what's no, going to come. No, but 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 between now and the summer, Rob, between, give him the give him yeah. the 
And by the way, I'm not saying they should have done that. I expected there's 10 games. And at the end of the 10 games, literally yeah. at the end of the 10 games, if it, and I think it probably would have been the same kind of up and down and no progression. Then it's like, okay, we, yeah. he's, had the, he's had since September almost the whole season. But, but you've thrown we're going to make a change. Final Champions League well, spot then, possibly. Rob, haven't you? you well, you, yeah. You, you've, you've thrown that if, away. If you want to give him, just to be sure, just to make sure that this isn't going to, going to go right. I expected to the end of the season. God, particularly after all the words of like, how we're going to stick with our man. That just shows you, by the way, in this sport, in this league, you know, your job can quickly become untenable. And it almost was there with the booze at halftime at the end of the game. Um, yeah. But let's cut to the chase, mate. Like, they got big games coming. You just said it. Who's available? What are they going to do? Are they going to go with, like, interim manager to the end of this? I don't know who the heck that would be, by the way, interim yeah, manager. Well, I was, uh, well, yeah, well, I was... Nangle, yeah, Nangle's Nangle's man. around, Rob. He, he, he's high end. He's free. He's available. Yeah. He's not going to cost you any money. Yeah. There's other teams who might, you know, Spurs might be thinking about yeah. that move as well. Might you think about doing that first? Seems a right, rightish kind of fit. Um, I'm sure Brendan Rodgers will, will be putting his hat in the ring. We'll talk about yeah. Brendan later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, news coming out of, of Leicester City this morning, but. Um, I suppose Nagel, Nagelsmann's got to be the, the 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 choice, and that might be a reason why we see it now with Potter. Like they got a, ch- a chance yeah. to get a top manager that was, of course, yeah. recruited and hired by Bayern Munich. I mean, Richard Pochettino is the other one, Rob, that would feel that with his resume and work the clubs that he's been at and who he's worked with mm. before, he could be a good man manager and a sorter and a you know in that football club. Um, yeah, possibly. So, but I but I think Nagelsmann would be the obvious choice. He's available right now. That might have pushed the board and the owners and, yeah, and stuff the to decision make decision a little bit, make might, that decision have, a bit easier. Yeah, and there might have been discussions yeah. going on, and Nagelsmann might have said, "You know what? This 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 kind of suits me." So that would make most yeah. sense. And I think Nagelsmann, Rob, in terms of he had a, if he had a choice between Tottenham and Chelsea, with the spending that the owners have shown already, and that will yeah, continue with the to quality show. of player. I mean, it Chelsea. is. I know it's yeah. a tough job. I know there's a lot of players to sort through. Mm. I know there's someone they've got to get rid of a lot of players. But I suppose, again, if you bring in a top guy right now, he's got ten games yeah. to figure out his squad and who he wants to release and who mm. he wants to keep, who he thinks is going to be not wanted. And you've got kind of a head start on that process yeah. of. Of of um, you know thinning out the squad a little bit, I and mean, I'm sure they're going to bring more players in. So the more you think about it, the more that the uh, Julian Nagelsmann, and I think he's it's been reports that he'd yeah. love to work in in the Premier League, um, that that would make sense. Yeah. But we'll wait, we'll wait on that. That that could be a quick. I mean, we're not going to speculate on that, but that that could be something. Rob, that happens no. pretty quickly, isn't it? No, it could be. Yeah, a, a bit like Tuchel's fit into into Bayern, and obviously, mm. you know, got to win at the weekend. Maybe they'll see Nagelsmann as, as something similar. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible, Rob, and, and we'll, we'll talk about Brendan Rodgers um, as, in a moment. But thirteen Premier League managers now, the Come most on, ever man. in a Premier League season, have lost their jobs. 13. Is that the most you just I mean, said? It's an incredible ever, number I mean, when there's only 20 Premier League league teams. That, that yeah. 13 well, Southampton them changed theirs the twice, job, didn't um, they? So is that 12 teams? Yes, two for Southampton, yeah. yeah. God, blimey. Um, I mean, even the, even the Brennan Rodgers, which we'll, we'll get on to. Anyway, that's, yeah, that, that's the big news and that, that trumps everything really from the game. Um, well yeah. played, Aston Villa. We, we mentioned them real, real quick, the way that they're developing. Yeah, yeah, we should, yeah. yeah Unai Emi's really team good. are brilliantly set up, Rob. And, 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 and I don't know, you've probably read the stat, but since he joined uh, in November, uh, there's only Arsenal and the two Manchester clubs who've, who've won more right. points. He's right. gone in there, Rob. He's given yeah. structure. He's not afraid to defend with numbers if he has to. They've got good counter-attack. He's getting the best of Ollie Watkins. Buendia's starting to, to show the player that, that he can be. Uh, Jacob Ramsey's a talent that's going to get better and maybe play more central and have bigger influence on the game. Douglas Luiz. I mean, he's, he's getting a tune out of players, Rob. We were looking on Stephen Gerrard and saying, it doesn't look right. They're better than this. And they're, they're starting to get ambitions. They've gone ninth, Rob. I mean, they still might have a little fancy for... for Europa Conference or, or something, if they can continue yeah. the run. Do you know what, mate? I'm sorry, but I, my, my, head, my my brain's still spinning here. I'm now thinking about Graham Potter. <laughs> what's next for Graham Potter? There's there's two clubs I know, right I'll now. I'll tell you what's next there's for Graham t- Potter. Well, there's, there's, there's million two, percent what's next one? for Graham Potter. Leicester City? Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace. 
Crystal Palace. What about Leicester City, Rob? London is it, Club. Which is more attractive to him? Leicester, Graham Potter, better footballers Depends at the moment. where you want to be. Yeah, Leicester's not a bad shell. Um, I think Crystal Palace would be. I mean, I don't know. The Palace Brighton thing, I don't know if that holds anything. <laughs> Tottenham? Sort of little is Tottenham between. too big? It's good. Does, can he no, get a Tottenham? No, no. His he, 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 big, big six yeah, days. I think he, so. He's become the new David Moyes, mate, where people are going to say big six jobs are too big for him. Yeah. He, 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 he's <laughs> going to be the king of the next level down. Oh, gosh. Amazing. I mean, this merry-go-round is just, it, it's insane. It's insane. You know, we're going to, this is going to yeah. be like interesting in the next couple of weeks of who hires who. Um, all right, mate, let's, let's move yeah. on to. Um, Another game, and, and by the way, like, isn't there enough stuff to talk about here? Newcastle United, 2-0 victory against Manchester United. I was, I was thinking, you know, oh. I, I forgot to say at the top of the show, mate, I was watching the weekend and we're starting off with Man City v Liverpool, two, you know, two of the best teams of, of, of current time. And I'm thinking, you know, what's this going to be? 1-1 like? at half-time, could go either way. 4-1, City smashed them and then... And then I'm seeing the day go, Rob, and, and the game's all through Saturday and then today. And, you know, sometimes you just like, you, you, you know, we, you, you feel like we were blessed to be able to play in the Premier League because it is a special league. And sometimes you feel like blessed that you're working yeah. in the Premier League. Like, this is our job. This is what we have to do. It's, it's, it's just talk about this thing that just keeps giving storylines, managers sucking, new stories, big players brilliant, coming yeah, in, fallouts, Conte rants. I mean, it's in I week on week. That, I, I mean, you know, the Graham Potter news is, is you just breaking off air. It's an incredible narrative of, 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 of a league. And it was interesting. I, I just uh, read this week that the, the, um, there was a couple of documentary makers who were trying to do a bit of an all or nothing behind the scenes look at the Premier League. And I think the Premier League have, have um, squashed the idea, almost said like they don't want, you know, you seen behind the curtain too much. And, and I just think, well, we see enough in front of the curtain, really. I don't know what, what uh, Good luck trying to cover see, it. Can you imagine that, how long that would be? There'd be like 25 <laughs> seasons, be a season every yeah. season. I mean, There's so much to cover in the league. I don't know where they'd start on something mm. like that. But no, you, you, mm. you're absolutely right. And, and stories keep coming. Newcastle United, I fancy them in this game, Rob. I just, I, I am loving yeah. the yeah. way that they play with the energy that they mm. play with and the intensity. We've said it, I, again, I'm saying the same things about the, the flipping incessant yeah. nature of yeah. their football. They get, they get one yeah. nil up against Man United and they want two, they want three in the last few minutes. Yeah. It's just, yeah. you know, with that crowd behind them at St. James's Park, the front foot energy, got to be the fittest team in the league. They yeah. won't allow Man United, particularly in the second half, to, to establish any kind of control or to get their foot on the ball. High pressure, mm. high intensity, asking questions from one side to the other side, balls into the box. Different strikers can come into the game and make an impact. Again, Alexander Izak makes the key play, really, the key ball in behind. And yeah. then it's really well finished off by um, Joe Willock in the middle of the goal. Um, Newcastle United, and I've said it a while now, I think will mm. finish in the top four. I think they're showing us that they're... Their stats are such that, that deserve to be in third place right now. Um, yeah. Anything anything in particular, Rob, that impressed you today with the way that Eddie Howe's men played in, 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 a, in a game that was um, just so do, energetic? Do you, know what, do you know what today showed me, Rob? And, I, you know, I'm uh, kind of looking on the emotion. Today was a day where I thought Man United went up and almost, look, you know, this is a badge, we're the Red Devils, look at our history, look who we are. You know, we're, we're Man United. We beat you in the Cup a few weeks ago, by the way. Mm. And I thought it was that attitude against a team with aggression, with athleticism, oh. with purpose, with desire, with a sense of, you know, you know, show us some respect. We're going to earn your respect today. Mm. And they ran them off the park, Rob. Yeah, they did. They wanted the game more. They were better in the attacking third. It's built off the best defensive record in the league that goes without enough credit. 19 goals conceded in 27 games is an incredible thing. Because they're attacking all the time. Players. Right? And it's not, they're attacking all the time. Yeah, That's why. it's basically, basically go on the attack. The shape of the team is the most important thing that, that helps the back four. Kieran Trippier's running yeah. Marcus Rashford, yeah. one of the most informed players in the league. The other way, Rashford can't influence a game. So Maximum's running at Darlow, causing more kind of problems on the other side. And he's at, you've got a top-end striker now. Uh, great that Callum Wilson come on, gets his goal, will still be part of it. It was um, it, it was a day, Rob, when it, it, it also shows like, you know, a bit like I was saying earlier, 
It doesn't matter who you are in this league. It doesn't matter what your history was, how many titles you've run, you've won, whatever. Eddie Howe's set up a team that's built on lots of the important basics that you can overlook. Their ability to hunt the ball, their press, their athleticism, their drive and desire. Then you add the, ta- the quality, the yeah. talent and the ability yeah, and the organisation. Yeah. Then you add that 55,000 fans, yeah. mate, and you got something. You've mm. absolutely got something. I was, as, as I'm watching at the end, I saw two things really hit home to me. The first was Eddie Howe at the end of the game. The nine minutes is up. It's been a big game. It, it, it's an emotional game. Obviously, he talked about the effect since the, the League Cup and whatever. He shakes hands with his, his uh, with his number two. He, he cheers a thing. He walks around the fan. There's nothing. There's, it's, it's not that clock fist pump. It's not the pep thing on the sideline yeah. or the Conte running up and down. He's a very considered man, but it means as much to him. Don't, don't think it doesn't mean as much to him because he hasn't mm. running up and down no, and doing absolutely. cartwheels and things. It means as much to him. And then he, he keeps everybody level. He keeps everybody right. He did, I heard him do a lovely little speech after the after the the, the match. Talked about. This is a feeling. This is we. This is who we are. We've got a big week of three games coming up. Let's make sure we're ready. It's just a brilliant fit for this football club, Rob. Mm-hmm. An absolute brilliant fit. And I have to say, he's done ten times better than I thought he would in, in this space of time. Mm. No, well said. And um, they're just a, they're a joy to watch right now. It's still, I still can't believe the change. I can still look back as like it was mm. yesterday that uh, Mike Ashley was there, and, and you got Steve Bruce and others. And, <laughs> Oh, blimey. Yeah. The turnaround in that club is, is incredible. Um, but Man United, Rob, were disappointing yeah. again. And, and there's no question the progress yeah. that Eric Ten Hag has made. And for the majority, mm. he's had a really good run, uh, obviously up to the League yeah. Cup final. After the League Cup final victory against um, Newcastle United, things haven't looked very good. There's been no goals in the last three. Um, and in certain yeah. games, you know, you look back at the Liverpool smashing, you look back at the City game earlier on, Mm. Not so big scoreline in this one, though. But is there something about Eric Ten Hag's management philosophy that means that yeah. if, if there's, they don't mind an open game, there's no compact yeah. nature to the team? Like, mm. you looked at the midfield, Rob, and you've got Scott McTominay playing as a number 10, and maybe to stop Bruno Gamal's yeah. dictating. But he's really high, high yeah. and he can't protect yeah. the back four from there. You've got Bruno in that, in that yeah. position. So there isn't is okay, he's okay as, a, as that player. You've got Rashford mm. and Anthony that, that, that can do great things going forward, but against the toughest sides, they don't help yeah. much. It's almost like they, they, mm. they should go back and watch Alex Ferguson's Man United sides that we played against, go and watch David Beckham, yeah. go and watch Ryan Giggs, poor skulls, but particularly the wide players, Giggs mm. and Beckham, to realise how yeah, much they work, work their socks off. that you need to put in to be champions. Yeah. And that's what that side was for me. And we, we went toe-to-toe with that team many times. But that, the, the, yeah. the nature of that, well, it, 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 always the, 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 the best hard-working players. That was always the thing with Sir Alex Ferguson. Yeah. And I feel yeah, like yeah. this United team's got mm. talent, it's got flair, it's got goals, it's got creativity, yeah. and it's got a lot better. But I still don't think, and I'm going to say my favourite word of all time, Rob, it's still not a durable team. It's still durable. against difficult mm. sides. It's, it allows that side to have, you just said it, the, wing, the wingers were taken on the full-backs. There's not much protection there from Rashford and, yeah. and, and, and Anthony. Is that too simple, Rob? Or is that the way that he's going to trust his attacking philosophy? No, I, 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 I'm not sure it's too simple. I, I, I sense with Ten Hag, I, my, my, my note here for Ten Hag was, a really ba- bad day for a good coach. I thought it was a really bad day for him, Rob. He has a few. And we he's had a few. Him on sub- yeah, and, but, but we also have, have seen the other side when yeah. he's made changes and been good yeah. and he's affected the team and we, we, we've noticed those things and we've said them. I thought the whole team set up, Rob, the, 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 the Valt Vag horse, unless mm. you're going to play a way that gets him into game. There was a point in the second half where, I know at half-time, but into the second half, it was, he'd only had seven touches of the yeah. ball. Yeah. Now, if your centre forward, who's a lone striker underneath a three, basically, is not getting the ball, then those guys on the outside, those guys underneath him, are not going to get into the game. You never saw Bruno. At one time, I think, is Bruno still on the pitch? We never saw Rashford at all. Didn't look particularly mm. up for the game. Didn't want to trace Chippier mm. back. No. Anthony got involved in a bit of a one-on-one with, with yeah. Dan Byrne that, that he ended up losing, that didn't yeah. get in the game. Mm. Didn't get in the game. 
I thought his personnel was, was, was different. I thought the team shape, which you were right, you made a great point at half time. You know, McTominay's so high. You got Bruno in there. You got you've got you know Sabitzer just trying to hold something yeah. against yeah. a midfield that's athletic, that are breaking, yeah. that are counter attacking. Um, it was interesting with the subs, Robin, and I read that the subs that he makes. So sixty two minutes he makes his first set of substitutes. Five minutes later, Newcastle score. 82 minutes, he, he makes his second set of substitutes. Five minutes later, Newcastle get the second. It wasn't. He, he ends up bringing his two centre backs off at, yeah. at one point. Yeah. It was like it was just one of those days where mm. hmm, I'm not sure what he was thinking or how he was thinking. It was a bad day for him, and he's done a lot of great work. They've got one trophy in the bag in mm. semi-finals of the FA Cup. Yeah. They, they're in the, you know, so there's lots of good yeah. things, but. If they don't come to town and, and they... First of all, Rob, forget tactics and X's and O's. Less de- desire, less passion, yeah. less effort. Yeah, that's than, it. Than Newcastle. That's forget it. X's and O's. Let's yeah. just get that right yeah. first. Because they were nowhere near yeah. that. And yeah. once you go beyond that, then tactically you would, you would expect him to do better. So I've read a really interesting st- uh, stat today. I know you're data in fact, man, Rob, about Manchester United's away form in the Premier League. Goals against in the Premier League, away from home, they've conceded 27 goals. That's the yeah, 17th well, the most in the Liverpool. league. Yeah, yeah, yeah seven. Yeah. But yeah. Still, that's still 20 goals for a top yeah. team. Yeah. Well, that, 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 know, that goes into the narrative, it, Rob, of, of being... We don't care where we're at. We're gonna we're gonna go on the front foot. We're gonna be yeah. we're gonna we're gonna be uh, expansive and 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 again, shots faced, Rob. Another one, just an interesting right. one. Shots faced, so shots against, one hundred and seventy eight. That's ninth in the Premier League. Wow. Yeah. If you if you're a big club of that standing, people yeah. shouldn't be you're having that giving. many looks at your goal. Right. And 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 then the better teams, Rob, the better finishers are going to take some of those. You're going to drop points, and I think. Yeah. And also. Yeah. You know, we've seen them get really badly beaten a few times as well so again mm. I'm just going to be interested yeah. Rob if that's a philosophy that is going to well I'm not he might say to us Rob if he's sat on our podcast he might say well I'm not going to I ain't going to change our philosophy I'm not going to be I'm not going to change the way that I want us to play as a team and as a football club I'm not going to change my wingers and, no. and let's have Fred playing on no. the wide left let's have somebody else playing mm. and we're going to block up and we're going to play on a counter attack that's so what I I understand that. What what the, the best way is, is to, with your Antonis and your Bruno uh, Fernandes and your Marcus Rashford and your Martials, and I don't know whether this is mm. possible, mm. but in, insert something in them that makes them have a spirit and a mentality like a Giggs, like a Beckham, like these guys that can mm. do the attacking part incredibly well, but also, also will will fight back, run back, tackle. Again, that might be, that might be pie in dare, the sky. Dare I say, Rob, dare, dare I say today... You could take a look at Newcastle. Joe Willock. Yeah. Jacob Murphy. Yeah. Joe Ellington. Yeah. Sean Longstaff. You know, players, Rob, who we didn't think, who, who Eddie Howe has taken on and, and put a, a two-way game into him. Right. They look, all look better in possession, but all done off work hard and, look, and know their roles outside of the job yeah. as well. You yeah. know, we, Eddie Howe's doing this with a lesser quality of player yeah, that and look what he's producing. It. No, that's a good point. Two-way players. Yeah. Uh, that's what he got to be. I, I feel like for champions, to be champions, and wherever you look at the best mm. sides, you know, you, you're seeing a, a team that work really, really hard for each other. Um, all right, that was the United story, yeah. a Manchester United story. It was all about the other United today, Newcastle United. Congratulations to them. Yeah. Um, just before we move on, Rob, top four slots, you know, if, if I don't know, what, what, <laughs> I, I'll get your opinion in a minute, but we, of course we know that Arsenal and Man City are locks. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely going to put Newcastle United in there. Then it becomes, a, 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 you know, a challenge between Manchester United and Tottenham. I think Brighton, maybe just too many points back right now. There's six points back. A couple of games yeah. in hand, though, yeah, to be Brighton, fair. Memphis, but, yeah. I, but I think, for me, it's going to be between Man United and Tottenham. And I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure if Spurs can get a boost from the manager change. I, fa- I fancy United to do, do it ahead still, of Spurs. I fancy think... United to, to bit. Yeah, I think those four in more mm, order, yeah. I think mm, I'm know, not so sure. City and, I'm, and, I'm, and Newcastle United. Yeah, I'm really not so sure. I, they, Rashford's uh, going to start scoring I'm, again. You know, ever, Spurs is going to be an interesting uh, from now at the end of the season, Rob, with uh, all that's going on in that football club. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. Yep. We'll see well, whether, you know... The big bears away, so everybody can enjoy themselves now. We'll see if that, if that works out or not. Mm. 
All right, other games, my friend. I think okay, my friend, let's, yeah. let's, let's get to a few other games. And we were going to start with Crystal Palace, Leicester, mainly because of Roy Hodgson returning back to uh, Crystal Palace, 75 years young, back in the game, been brought in to win a few games and make Palace safe. You know, not everybody happy with the decision, but last kick of the, the game, Mateta finishes it off in front of um, the Palace fans. The place goes crazy. Palace win 2-1. Leicester find themselves in the bottom three, and we're thinking, ooh, uncomfortable, slightly uncomfortable for Brendan. He's going to have to, you know, get to work pretty quickly and sort this out. Uh, for Roy, obviously, a, a dream start back at Palace, getting um, the first win in, in 2023. Um, and then the news breaks this morning, mate, I'm, as, you, as you're going on, before you go on air, um, the Brendan Rodgers has being sacked or left by mutual, mutual agreement consent. seems yeah. to be the, the yeah. in phrase nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I, we, we talked about this before the news came through. And my my yeah. response yeah. was, well, my understanding is that the club, well, it's, it's, it's widely reported that they've made club record losses from 21-22 season. They're in trouble with the financial fair yeah. play regulations. And the, the general yeah. thought was... Well, to, to, to fire a manager, you know, uh, to, is, is going to have to pay him up and they can't afford to do that. That was the kind of the line and, and the trust is still there with the manager yeah. that he's good enough to get him out of it. But then we get the news that he's gone. Wow. First off, wow. Second off, <laughs> uh, I, I don't, I, I think it's, I think it's the right call. They're drifting down. They've lost six out of the last seven, yeah. I think, in yeah. all competitions. Yeah. Um, they're in the bottom three right now. They're a team that, that refuse, really. We've had a few rep um, interviews and comments that they still feel that they, they can get out of it, that they're not really in this fight. They're yeah. absolutely in the fight. Brendan Rodgers is gone. Mm. The longer time goes on, I feel, for Brendan Rodgers, the less this will impact his future jobs. I think it's one of them, Rob, where after a few kind of months, you know, you look back at his work, and he's actually done really good work at all clubs. FA Cup victory for them, two mm. fifth place finishes. They won the Community Shield. They played in European football. And I think other clubs, Rob, at some point will say, Rogers, he's available. Did a good job for the most part at Leicester. Went a bit stale. Um, but it, it, I totally agree. But isn't it a job to a certain point, Rob? Doesn't they get a point? Do you know yeah. what? Do you know yeah. what? My, my slight hesitation with, with, with Brendan would be, and, and I think we, we've touched on this before, and. He's lost his job, and, and I'm disappointed for him. Whether it's one of those a bit like Patrick Vieira, do you think there's enough there? Would he be able to get them out of trouble? You think so, but yeah. week on week, we keep seeing evidence. Yeah. I think six defeats in the last seven, as you say, uh, struggling. My, my kind of biggest thing with Brendan, Rob, is, and I saw it a little bit pre the international break, and then you saw a couple of, almost like a bit oblivious to what, what's going on and where he is. A bit yeah. like not driven enough to stay like I look at the two managers right I look at David Moyes and I look at Brendan Rodgers and I look at those two and think David Moyes will tough this out and he'll stay there and they'll stay up that's what that's what David Moyes will do at West Ham I'm not sure I can say the same thing about Brendan Rodgers I'm yeah. not sure Rob yeah because it, it, his, his approach will be different get him, 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 him not being there now I don't think hurts him that as much as it should do but back on that analogy, Rob, I, I don't think that Brennan Rodgers has got it in him at all to change his philosophy. He's so strong-minded in the way he wants his teams to play. He wants so to he play can, his he, way he, out of he, trouble. He won't allow himself to, to fight his way out of relegation, do what's needed to get out of relegation. He still wants to play his good football. Yeah, I, I think he'll still want to play his way out of a, of a situation where you start getting to emergency mm. situation, Rob, and I think we've got 10 games left, which Leicester have, and you're second bottom. Are they now, this, this table's changed so much, I think I've got the correct table in front of me. Um, mm. That now it's an emergency. And we'll, we'll, I mean, briefly on the West Ham game, Rob. Um, that was such a, such a typical David Moyes. I don't care, we're at home. We ain't going to take any risks. <laughs> we're going to be super defensive minded. We're going to, we'll, we'll find a way to score a goal and then we're going to defend it. They look solid, mm. they look safe. There was a couple of moments from, from Southampton, but mostly that game was controlled by Moyes. They could have scored more on a yeah. counter-attack. That's the way, at this point, you, you got to find trouble. a way out of yeah. it. That's the way you do it, I think, isn't well, but it? But hasn't Brendan Rodgers got to get a bit of that, Rob? Isn't that what oh, makes yeah. you a fuller, more rounded manager? I think so. I think so. But it's, but it's not happening. 
it's done happening. So we're seeing yeah, it with well, Sean Dyche. We're seeing mm -hmm. it with Sean Dyche at Everton. He's doing exactly the same thing. Defensively, let's get super tight because we don't score many goals. So we can't afford to concede any. If we get a goal, it's got to be 1 0. And you're seeing well, 1 0 mm -hmm. at Everton now and 1 0. Today at West I'll Ham. come back to you on a point uh, as we get to the end because I think there's, there's, an, there's another slight line. But yeah, great win for, for well, an ugly win or whatever win. It's a win for, for David Moyes. Yeah. Uh, Aguirre gets his goal. They get the three points. They keep a clean sheet and um, helps them in, in, in their fight against uh, the, the drop. Uh, any other games to pick up? Nottingham Forest won, Wolves won, Forest. There's talk about Steve Cooper possibly losing his job. If he went, I mean, it's incredible. Uh, Forest go 1 0 up through Johnson. Uh, Wolves uh, equalised to Daniel Pedence, who there was a bit of an incident in that game, Rob. I believe the FA are looking into it whether Pedence yeah. allegedly sort of spat in the face of Johnson. There was no evidence about that, so yeah. nothing was given. But I believe there is an investigation, which yeah. would be really sad to hear, and obviously Pedence would be a big loss. Yeah. if uh, anything came of that. But a 1-1 draw, point of peace for the two teams there. Uh, and then the exciting game, the, the six six goals thriller uh, at the Amex, Brighton 3, Brentford 3, the two you know well-run well, uh, teams who yeah. rely heavily on data yeah. and recruitment and great management. Great and, and what a game, game this was. I mean, mm. I mean Brentford score, Brighton equalised. Brentford score, Brighton equalised. I mean, it was going yeah, but from end to end. Um great game to watch as, as, as a neutral and it was interesting Bob because I looked at a few stats on this because I thought okay let, let's just have a look at this 73% possession Brighton against 27 Brentford and I'm sure Brentford are okay with that three goals Brent, Brighton had 22 shots uh, Brentford had six Brighton had 14 corners Brentford never had one which is we know that they're, they're so strong from corners so just the dominance of football and different ways of different doing ways things of doing but Thomas Frank's got a style yep that doesn't mind the opposition, they're well set up, you can have the wide areas, they hit you on counter-attack, and they do it brilliantly, and it, it's been, you know, served them so well this season. Brighton want the ball, but they want a ball, and they turn it into goal opportunities, goal chances, mate, with, with this De Zerbi. And, um, you know, probably a fitting 3-3 sort of tells you everything about the two teams in the different ways they're doing it, but in the ways that, that are proving so successful this season. Yeah, and, and just kind of summarising, Rob, you know, I think this was a big, was it showdown weekend, showdown Saturday or something they were, they were saying this weekend back in England about some of these relegation games. And, and the ones, yeah. you know, we always say that home form is the most important part of a team trying to stay up. And some of the teams at home did the business and some didn't. Forest is one team that didn't do it. West Ham did it. Bournemouth did it. Uh, and Crystal Palace did it as well, Rob. And, and, and just to kind of finish up from yeah. my side of things here, from my underappreciated and I'm going to swing back to Salah's Park and uh, Crystal Palace. And um, it's a little bit of fun with this one, Rob, but, but how about Roy Hodgson? How about Roy Hodgson being, being a little bit uh, underappreciated at Palace with the, the switch to a, mm. a, a fancier style of football and a bigger name in some ways than Patrick Vieira? And yet the, the old fella comes back and, and he's smiling and he's got <laughs> Ray Lewington, the, the grey hair on both of them at the end yeah. there, cuddling and stuff was a great picture. But how about that for turning around a team, Rob, that, that's struggling to play, Absolutely. that wasn't playing at Abreuji Eze, where it's like, why isn't Eze playing? Yeah, Maybe he's fallen yeah. out with uh, Patrick Vieira. Hodgson comes back in, plays him. They have 20 shots in the first half, I think some kind of record. They continue it in the second half with new yeah. energy, with an attacking one, two, one shots, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> absolutely. Well, well done, Big, uh, big Roy. And I just, just want to mm. chuck him some kind of... Uh, credit today and that's going to be underappreciated manager I'm not sure again it's a bit of fun I think he's, he's absolutely appreciated yeah. over his career for what he's done but talk about having an impact you know and an impact and, and maybe well on the way for the um, vindication of uh, Steve Parrish Robin making that you know a lot of people including myself thought was a, was yeah. a bit of a panicky yeah. move um, but that's mm. the, a big step I mean it's not full vindication yet they've got to find somebody else yeah. in um, maybe it's Graham Potter in the summer or whatever but, but that's a big part yeah. of them staying up. 30 points now for Palace, Rob. 29 games played. They've got to find another mm. two and a bit. Two, two wins and a couple of draws. Two, two, yeah, two wins, two draws yeah, and probably enough okay. this year to, to keep you up. But it's, it's a great shout. And, and do you know what, what's most fitting and why he's underappreciated? Because I heard in an interview after the game, Rob, and he talked about, he said that he thought he, he never felt old enough to retire in the first place. So, you know, he still feels he's got a little bit of business to do, which is just typical Roy. But I thought the other thing that, that was so 
much tells you about the man where he said, um, you know, it was great to get the win. I saw things and the team were doing things that have, have moved on since I was last here. And I have to give yeah. credit to yeah. Patrick Vieira yeah. and the staff before in their attacking hours of the pitch. And I thought, you rarely hear that. And it's, no. there's very few managers that even think about the guy before. Mm. But he, he, he had a word to say, and, you know, that they have got attacking options and he's going to get Eze, at least say, and so. Zaha, which obviously he's, he looks like he's got a yeah. groin injury and could yeah. be missing for a few games, which is um, a bit of a worry. But, you know, with, with Roy at hand, you just feel you're in safe hands. But I thought it, it was just very telling of the man that he, he wanted to give Patrick a mention as well as, as they got the win. So, yeah. Just in, in closing, Rob, I'm, I'm kind of keep going back to my sort of Brendan Rodgers. I know we, 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 we slightly have, have a view of what, what comes next. I just think at this stage, when I, when I think, you know, when Graham Potter now has lost his job, that, that at one time, Brendan Rodgers was like the new bright coach underneath the big coaches who we all think. Deserve his back is, is in town. Thomas Frank is in town. Graham Potter's in town. I just worry a little bit that there's a new breed coming, Rob, who, who are showing themselves to be good, smart, young, forward-thinking coaches in the mould that he came into football. And he might have to be a little bit careful for some of those jobs that probably was more nailed on for. There might be other contenders in, in, in the frame for now. Yeah, yeah, it, it might be. And, you know, again, we, we, we need to keep a limited list of, of all that's going on here because this changes so quickly. And, and then you start thinking about yeah. Nottingham Forest that have stuck with Steve Cooper. You know, <laughs> yeah. you get attracted to, yeah. a, to a Brendan Rodgers Rob for the last bit or, or a mm. Graham Potter. I mean, it, it, it just continues. You know, the, whole, the, the whole possibilities continues now with the stress involved in, in going towards the bottom. I mean, what is that, mm. 13 managerial changes? There might be more. There might be more. 13, yeah. Um, but, with, but, but you're right. Yeah, some, yes, there's, there's some okay. new kids on the block. There's some new kids on this merry-go-round, and I think they're going to be moving around a little bit more. Mm. But the Potter news, wow, that's something I'm going to remember a lot yeah. in the middle of this this podcast show that we got the news yeah, that Graham I mean, Potter's yeah. been uh, let go from Chelsea Football Club. A big, big job for somebody. Mm. Todd Bowley, Rob, he's, he's made some big, big decisions. He's paid a lot of money for players that yeah. don't look like this, much This is the, the biggest, by the way. Oh. This is the biggest one here. Yeah. The next appointment, his next appointment, whether it be interim or permanent, is huge between now and the end of the season. And I say, Rob, they're still in the quarterfinals of the Champions League oh, against blimey. Real Madrid. Two games against Real Madrid to come for somebody. So can they get Nagelsmann? Um, they, they, incredible. They, they, they could make a Nagelsmann before that. Then they could, they could literally get him in. Yeah, real quick. They could quick. nick him in and get him in. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll wait and see. Stay tuned. Wow. What a weekend, my friend. Uh, Premier League has ever explodes into life after an international break. Man City and Arsenal continue to slug it out at the top, both grabbing four goals in victory, while Newcastle were the more united of the teams, beating Manchester in a massive win at St James Park. At the bottom, Leicester lose to Palace. Brendan Rodgers loses his job, and we've just heard the breaking news that Graham Potter is Chelsea manager no more. We'll be back on Sunday, April the 9th, looking back at match week 30. We'll see Manchester United facing Everton, Southampton host Man City and Liverpool take on Arsenal um, on the big game on Sunday. But for now, I'm Earl. He's Mussy together with the two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe, stay healthy. We might see if we can get Graham Potter on as a guest next week. It's a good night from me. And it's good night from him. Good night. Good night. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.